Hello everyone and welcome to another 3D Buzz training video. In this video, Zach will be continuing his progress on the AT-AT like vehicle that we are creating <laughs> for Unreal Tournament 3. Right. So, yes, that's right. Just hide it and let's pretend it doesn't exist. Right. That's that's how I'm going to get by this video. We're just going to hide the whole thing, pretend we never started it, and I'm going to All right, good, good, good. Sounds good. So what do you have planned for us tonight? I'm going to work on the lower leg, which I haven't had a whole lot of time to plan out or really think about with any amount of significance. So, um, yeah, so everything that you see here is kind of right off the cuff. Oh. Boy. So let's create a cylinder. That's, I'm going to start actually start at the knee and work my way back down just so that I know exactly how big I can make the uh, okay the pieces. So let's see. I'll pull out a cylinder. And you're not going to extrude from the cylinder into the piece that goes. No, down, no, no. Actually, I'm I'm saving that for the that's going to the for the shoulder gonna, thing. The cylinder is going to be a big. Um, Joint, more or less, right? That the, yes, a great, big, in this case, green joint. That the upper part of the leg and the lower part of the leg will basically Somebody's going to have some fun with this audio, I can already tell. Uh, I can see that. All right, uh, let's pull the height down. Now, all of our thickness, as we mentioned probably earlier on, 56 times so far, is kind of arbitrary. We're sort of, kind of, making it up as we go. Uh, because the image planes here aren't very nice in terms of height reference because they're going to give us a really overly skinny leg. We discussed that earlier. Zach has printed out some of his other reference images that you guys have seen him thumb through a million times. I mean, I, and I, I just I just picked one of them up and wow, yeah, that little that center knee joint thing looks pretty easy actually. Yeah, it shouldn't be that bad. I'm, I'm not really worried about much of what's going on here. So uh, let's see here. Actually, oh, you mean the the funny little plate thingy? No, this, this whole this whole piece right here. Looking looking over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have anything. Yeah, to that's be like of. that's like that's like three it's minutes. Great, we're sitting timing. here looking at printouts while everybody's sitting here waiting for us to start modeling. Well, they'll see. It's the square thing in the center, and basically with that, it's a few extrusions okay. and uh, some bevels. Or um, some let's see. While well, you talk to them about that, uh, let's. See. I'm gonna go ahead and kill out this little guy here. I'm trying to decide if that's enough rounding there. It looks like it may be. Yeah, I guess so. I can always, um, well, I don't really want to have to add more later. No, but yeah, that's good. But I think that's going to work. So let's see. Let's convert this over to an editable poly. Make sure it looks at least mostly centered. Uh, you could always do the align tool, but I think eyeballing it's going to be good enough in this particular case. Uh, let's see here. Let's press F4. Jump over to edges. Grab this guy, ring. And I'll start with the inside edge here. We're going to connect all of these. Uh, we will chamfer that new little edge, and actually the default value is not bad, but I just can I can never leave it at the default value. I always feel bad about doing it. Uh, let's grab all of these edges with a ring, hold down control, and click over to polygons. I love that trick. And then let's extrude by local normal to a negative value to put a little bit of an indention there. And that looks good. Now, over here and over here... Make sure we're not selecting through. I mean, I could always go change settings, but I'm not gonna, so meh. Uh, let's see. Let's do an inset, because we need one. And we need more of an inset than that. That actually looks pretty good. And we'll click OK. And I'm going to do another inset before I do anything else. So this is where we're going to do. Hang on. Where, where's the? There you go. That's not a bad distance. Um, I'll sit here and go back and forth for just a minute. And click OK. All right. Now. On the outside of the leg, and you know, I got I can't stress this enough, I know it sounds silly, but if you stay zoomed up on a great big thing like this, it's hard to sometimes remember which side you're working on. Mm -hmm. More than once I've botched that one, so after verifying that this is the outside of the knee, let me grab all of these guys, and this guy, we're going to click the ring button, hold on control and switch over to polygons, but on the inside of the leg, I'm going to deselect... Let's see, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, five, okay, reselect that guy. I'm going to deselect these dudes here along the bottom. Okay, now with that, we need to extrude these. And not negative, but positive, to create an actual amount of thickness there. Now, the amount of thickness we create... Yeah, it's not going to be that high. No, it, it's, it's fairly very, thin. Yeah, it You is. know, and, and there it is, right there. Uh, do you know this rotates while he's actually walking? Does it? I noticed that, and I was watching the film really closely. You see these two little squares up here at the top? Mm -hmm. Those actually piston up and down while his legs work. Oh, that's cool. Like, you can see, like, here there are different elevations. Mm -hmm. They actually do some stuff. But nice. It's just little things I started really trying to watch out for, um, not only for modeling, but for animation later that's on. That's awfully high. 
Just based uh, off what I just saw. Yeah, you that's know, better. you know, I'm still and, and I appreciate. It. It. Okay, you're well, you're welcome. Okay, so this one, this guy has kind of opened up here along the bottom, and the reason for that is, well, you'd have to go take a look at some of the pictures. We got this plate that's got to slide down the inside here, so that there's got to be a gap. flush with the... Right. Yeah. Uh, it, it's almost like it's it kind of sits down inside. Right, right, that's know. what I'm saying. So we need an opening. All right, now on the outside of the knee, which is where I'm going to devote the at least the beginning part of my attention, we need, I guess we can see it in the image planes, this funny little plate here. So here's how we're going to create that. I'm going to grab one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, let's see. Do we go with seven and eight? Let's not and just say we did. All right. And then one, I, you know, can we just get rid of the gizmo for a second? Now you're planning on breaking this off into its own separate object. And don't spoil the surprise. Oh, my bad. That's just, not I'm why playing, I have you here. Well, hello, Zach. I'm playing the role of the student. And as a student, yeah. my hand just went up. I'm curious. You know, and this is one of those moments when, you, and you've taught before, where you don't look up at the students for a minute. Oh, you just keep working. You just keep working. And I'll get to the questions in just a moment. Oh, sorry, I thought it was a perfectly legit question. It, it, it is, but it's being ignored for just a moment. Because here's what I'm going to do. Hold down shift and scale these guys in. And we're going to clone that to its own separate object and click OK. So now it's its own thing. Cool. Thanks for ruining the whole, th <laughs> like the whole night now. We might as well just stop modeling now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. OK. Now, uh, we want to bridge some edges. So let's hit 2. Come over here to bridge. And let's see. Da -da. Da -da 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 Clink. Our normal's facing the wrong direction. It kind of looks like they are, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Because you're getting these black polygons. I mean, that's okay. We can always flip that stuff, but wow. Clicky, 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 and clicky. All right. Now let's switch over to the entire element because oh, yeah. apparently it's all dark and scary. So we'll flip that. And that's a little less dark and scary. Now, with the whole thing selected, we're going to scale it back up a little bit because it didn't need to be quite as small as I made it. Because um, it fits just in there. It's pretty yeah. snug. But it does need to be a little taller, so we can make it taller. And that's what I like about this little trick. And now when we're done with it, we can get back out here to object mode. You like that? And we can rotate that however we want to. And Is it normally taller? It looks, it looks that way to me. Like it comes out just like a, a hair. Okay. You know, and you can always push it back inside. We could sit here and debate it for 30 minutes and then thereby kill the rest of the time on the video. I, yeah, a bunch I like of... Idea. Uh, and get to the all the, the beveling. Be beveling. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to bevel just yet. I've, I've got to create the little plate over here, okay. and then we can bevel all at once, cool. and then I'll feel better. Uh, what I'm going to do real quick, though, is create the funny little hinge bolt thingy that sits right in the middle of this thing. Uh, so let's go sphere. And we'll just draw out a sphere right here. And that's oh, a little that's big. Little big. A little big. And let's come over here to perspective for just a moment. I'll slide him out here where we can kind of work with him for just a moment. And then change a few things. First off, uh, we want to hemisphere this thing to 0.5. Uh, maybe a little more than 0.5. Maybe all the way up to 0.65. Oh, uh, that's not, that's too much. 0.55. I think, which is what I did incidentally just a second ago. So, hey, great. Um, now, let's. I think that's enough faces to make it look round. It looks pretty round to me. So let's convert the thing over to an editable poly. I'm going to come back here. You don't lose my selection just yet. Let's grab faces. Now, F4. Make sure I can grab these faces nice and quickly and easily. Let's see. Um, painting might be the way to go here. And make sure that we've got ignore back facing on because that'll bite you. Oh, that was Whoa. pretty cool. That was awesome. That was the awesome. All right. And uh, we're going to flatten these guys out. So we'll fly all the way down here to make planar. Pink. And push them back in just a little bit. And say about to like so. And we'll take these guys and we will inset them. You want to inset them? Yeah, okay, yeah. You're with me. I'm, I'm good you're with that. You're feeling it. I can tell you're I'm, feeling it. I'm good with that. Or actually, we don't have to. We could just grab the next row in. I mean, is it like if we cancel this, we could probably we scroll up here and you hit the shrink button. Yeah. And we could probably just extrude these guys in. 
That's probably what you were going to tell me to do, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, exactly. At first, I thought you were going to extrude That's what I thought you were going to do, man. That's what I was telling you earlier. If you just pay attention to me. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just what you sound like, right? Uh, all right, so four, and we're back over to faces, and let's grab our little select button. Yes, you, you do a great Napoleon Dynamite impression. All right. Yeah, let's see. Let's frame up on these guys. We're going to extrude these guys out. Just a little bit. And that's probably good. I think that'll probably work for the whole thing. For uh -huh. You, you want to leave all those faces on the back of it? Yeah, but you, well, probably not. Let's see here. Boom. Are they still selected? Did I lose them? It looks like I did. Do -do -do. All right. And we're still looking good there. Hit the Kaplow button. Hit number five key. It looks kind of like a, a jello mold. And uh, where do they need to do the smoothing group thing? Auto smooth. That yeah, works. Mm -hmm. And get the mighty mighty move tool and just slide this guy back. Now it'd probably be a good idea to make sure that he's aligned with our great big main Jane cylinder. Click you. And what is the... You're probably not going in world core. Oh, you are. Good. Excellent. So we just not align him in X, and then everybody's happy, and he's right in the middle. I think the whole thing's a little big. Yeah, it does seem that way to me. So I just tug it down a little bit. Uh, I think we're doing our thing. Okay, so now, if we shift our attention over to what's going on on the inside of the leg, we can grab this piece... And let's see. I'm going to try something real quick. I have no idea if this is going to work the way I want it to, but I'm still going to try. Let's go to pick, grab the cylinder here, uh, go to transform coordinate center. We will mirror, but not in that axis, in this axis. Okay, not quite what I was looking for. That's fine, though. Uh, we can still slide it back in where we need it. Uh, we'll do this, though. Let's affect pivot only, center to object, looking good. Slide this guy back in. We need to adjust his rotation, which I'm sure is set to all sorts of interesting things. Double check in gimbal. Set that guy back up to straight up and down. Now you can start to see why that gap down there is so important. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that seems to be fitting in pretty well. I know it's a little hard to see because we don't really have any beveling on the thing, and that makes it a little bit tricky. But uh, I guess if I hit F4, it becomes a little easier to see what's going on. And throw the old modeling material on all that real quick. Probably might help. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're still doing that whole paint selection number, which we don't really need to be doing. So we'll grab everybody. Hit the M key. Select the modeling material. Drop these guys on. Do, 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 do. And, you know. There. A little better. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's uh, grab this guy. Switch over to vertices. I'm going to take all these vertices. And I need I want to flatten them out. Not that I really have to do this, but if I do, I'll feel better. Wrong axis there, bud. There we go. And we're gonna slide all these guys right down into the leg. Now it's funny that this is doing this, that it's kind of poking out, because I was looking at my reference imagery. It's a little hard to see there, and I could be completely out of my mind. Oh yeah, here, just here's a side note. See the, the position of these two things? Mm -hmm. Look and study them real close. Got yep. them in your head? Left one's up higher. Now left one's down lower. Yeah. Very cool. So they, they do some wiggling. All right, Jeff, I want that to be in the uh, UCP <laughs> thing as well. <laughs> yeah, pour the pressure on Jeff. Hmm. Okay, so I guess that is kind of flat, which it means is. I need to push the whole thing in. Yeah. All right, so that's cool. It's a good thing to note. Which means either this is too wide, this is sticking out too much, all sorts of things that could be. Let's get out of sub-object mode for just a minute. Just push it off. Whoops. Whoops. Wrong, one. wrong guy. Grab you. Wrong one. Strike two. Strike. And yes, you got Yes, it. he survives on the third strike. There just you go. Barely. Um, but it does kind of start to make it look like hmm, some of this is a little too thick, either here or there. Maybe this down here is not wide enough. But that's kind of locked in. I don't want to have to go remodel that. No. Uh, we could drop a lattice on it, I guess, if we really, really had to. What I'm going to do instead is grab this guy. Well, let, me, let me let's see. We got some reference stuff over you here. You see what I'm saying? Um, okay. Now, hang on. There was some. There was a picture, a very particular picture. Now, here's one. Now, see, check this out. I saw this earlier today. And I was thinking, does that actually taper right there? 
Because you see how thick the black is right there? And see how thin it is down here? Mm -hmm. I mean, is that actually tapering in? No, it looks like, like it. We got any, any banged it with a great big 80-foot hammer and just knocked it in like that? Any more images anywhere in the library that might have a um, kind of close? Just a little there was bit? one. And this one's like, there, there's too much shadow to really know what's going on. Da, 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 da. I got to find the other one that I saw. Let me see here. Because um, I think there was a second one that kind of corroborated this one is hard to say because your your pixel quality is so low you could probably guess that it does not taper from this one though uh just because when you get in here to the great big thick pixels your pixel width stays about the same all yeah, the way it does. down yeah, it does. so i mean if you're using that as a reference then we could probably take the uh the knee joint and thin it out just a hair and then that would solve the problem you'd get your differences in height there mm-hmm uh, now let's let's see here. Let's split the difference though. We'll pull this guy out as far as he possibly can without overlapping down here, and that's pretty close. And what does that give us here? It gives us a. And who's not to say that the uh, the leg itself, um, the the shin, if you will, mm -hmm. um, you know, if that was a little thicker, maybe even. Well, there's a gap there though, so I'm not worried. Oh, about that. I see. Yeah, and there's yeah. supposed to be. And, yeah, and you can fine. see that, like even here, yeah. there's like a lot of overshadowing there that shows you. you that there's a gap. So I'm, I'm not too stressed about that. What I'm uh, really trying to show here is the differences in elevation here inside the knee. That's really what I'm focusing on. So let's see here. Let me grab the vertices here, and I'm just really, just barely gonna take them and go. Uh, there, and I think that's gonna make all the difference in the world. Okay. Now, uh, that would mean that I would take this plate over here on the outside of the knee, and I'd push this back in just a notch. There we go. And do you okay. need to push that nut back in, too? Yeah, I probably do. I totally overlooked that one. Thank you. Not a problem. Okay, cool. Now, over here, uh, back to this little spot. This uh, funny gap that we opened up here, we need to close that in. Mm -hmm. Now, you could do this in a couple of different ways. Uh, you could get away with making an extrusion. Make an here. extrusion, slide those vertices along the edges down the bottom, line up. Right? Yeah, I'm just going to slide the vertices and call it even. Okay. Uh, I think that's going to be the easiest way to go about oh, it. Oh, without doing an extrusion? Well, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, I guess it's not that bad. I, I don't think it's going to be such a major yeah, yeah, yeah. part, because it's on the inside of the knee. Uh, you know, it's all good. If it was on the outside of the knee, I'd be like, oh, whoa, we can't do that. But I think maybe here we kind of can. Um, let's see here. Just do, 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 do. That's really imprecise to do it that way, but um, it's getting the job done. You hit F4 and take a look at it. It's kind of, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. that's uh, why I, I would I know, I know, okay. but mm -hmm. see, it's like to, here's the, here's my catch. And here's what I'm kind of mentally grumbling about mm -hmm. is that if you just extruded this, I mean, you, need, you really need to splice it back in over here. So here's what not I'm necessarily, gonna... you can still keep the rounding and not have to worry about splicing it back in. Well, the other thing, too, is that this is um, a normal shape. This is what we're going to use to create the normal map. Mm -hmm. So if it's made out of some really weird polygons, it shouldn't matter that much. I just don't want it to be too hard to get all beveled and happy. Sure. Um, all right. Hang on just a sec. Let me grab this guy and get him temporarily out of the way. And, well, not too far gone, but just enough where I can ignore him for a moment. Okay, what I would probably need to do is, like, okay, if, see, I can't just extrude this face. Right here. Right, because now you've got the issue. You'd have to slice the, all that back in. Right. So you need to extrude this guy out and then move these faces. Is that what you were saying earlier? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's sometimes hard to follow you, you know, when you're doing that whole pesky talking thing. There you go. And, uh, yeah, we'll just go with that. Okay, now. Now, if you start Fade shifting. that yeah. stuff. And I can't really select through, but I can stick my head in there. And we can delete that, and we can delete that. Beautiful. And get you, so I'm talking your about. friend, and hit the one key to grab some vertices. And let's see here. I want you. I want you. I want you, and I want you. And we're just going to weld you all at once. Dun, 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 dun. Think. Now, let's see. Would it be all that critical to snap all those in? I don't think so. I don't think they necessarily need to be super ultra mega perfectly planar. If they needed to be, though, I guess we could do this. You just grab all these again. Um, uh, you know what? I just want you, and I want you to ring. You know what? I don't want these guys, though. Could you please not select them? Awesome. 
Now, grab you. Excellent. Shum. Make the plater. Blam. Ooh, wow. That was fantastic. That's, yeah. Makes me happy. All right. Make planer. Okay, cool. So now everybody there is nice and flat. Now, you, star of the show. We need you back on stage, please. Shade everything up so that I'm not fighting any sort of transparency. What are we? What axis was that? Was that Z? Was it, that was local Z. Yeah, that's what I thought. So let's see here. If I come down here, I can real carefully play with my spinner. I'd, I'd take some liberties with this. I would. Uh, I'd end up splicing it across and mm -hmm. then change the, the the two heights. You mean like tilt this back in? Yeah, so that yeah, you yeah. could keep one. You know, you can keep the thickness up top. Yeah, and then I, see, I see what you're saying. And I had actually discussed that um, earlier when I well, I discussed who was I talking to. I, I, I was something I was thinking about okay. earlier. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, it's just like, <laughs> wow. Disgust. With, who, who in the world would I, I think I missed that to? conversation? Sorry. You did. So did anybody else outside of my skull. Uh, let's see here. Let's um, make sure that we're constrained to edges for a moment, and we'll slide this over. And then we can uh, make sure we're not selecting through. And we can slide this guy over. So now that all should line up and be fairly neat. Okay. Now, back over here. Now, we'll get to what you're talking about here in just a second. First things first. I must have steak. Uh, click. All right. Now, fantastic. Let's have a look. What have we done? There you go. We have not damaged anything more than we absolutely had to. Now, what you, you were saying... Nicer. Huh? What? Who? Uh, this just looks really nice now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Oh, good. Make sure that everybody's happy and not ready to throw rocks yet. Uh, grab edges. We could ring and do the whole mighty mighty connect trick. Oh, isn't that special? Um, <laughs> let's see. We could make use that to our advantage a little, but okay. So that flattens that out. Slide it up just a tad. And what you were saying was that you could maybe put it down here where it's away from the knee, and then you now have the ability to kind of taper it in just a little. Yeah, that's what I was. Uh, well, I was actually thinking perhaps even another one, so you could. Um... You could control the thickness on the top, the bottom, without the bottom being a full taper, and between the two slices. Oh, just you open in there, this up. You between two slices. Yeah, that's where you can do your little bit of a taper. Then it's still straight all the way down. Well, see, I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to solve. Are you try just trying to get more of an it's opening just so in here? Beefy, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I hear you. But like we could, we giant. could also, you know, loop this and go. And yeah, so that, pull that out. I like it. And that was quick and easy and painless. Uh, and then if we, if you want to be hardcore, the only, the only reason I was thinking the other way is because it adds just a, a little extra area for some shadowing instead of just a straight bar that runs the whole way. And the funny thing the, is, I think it is just a straight bar that runs the whole I'm just way. Looking for a little more detail, but yeah, that's cool. Oh, you're being all picky and stuff. Just Hang on, let me it. let me cap this real quick. So that is a flat surface in there, just in case for some reason you could see through, because heaven only knows if that would pose a problem for us. I see what you're saying. Uh, so we could maybe, hang on, let me do this. We could grab you and then loop and then do the whole chamfer thing and click OK. Slide both of these guys up. And now if you stick your head in here, let's hit four. Can I get that one big fat polygon right back there? Um, maybe do something like this where you're changing the, oh, I grabbed everybody. Why? And you're doing it on the inside. I was picturing more on the outside, so again that. But I it, want the outside to be all flat. Okay, okay. I do. Okay, okay. I do. Then go back to the way you had it just a second ago. But I was. Oh, <laughs> man. Okay, okay. So th this is now extraneous detail. So I'm just gonna hold down Control, click Remove, and that works. I think we're set. Okay, now this guy. Yeah, not not you, but get out of sub object mode, you. All right. This guy, he needs to be over on the other side. In a couple he? of places. Yeah, he, he's got like work to do here and then down here as well. Correct. So um, we need to mirror so the cylinder 99 we're still using as our center, which is cool. Um, mirror, ah, pff, whatever. I could have just used offset, but I never used that spinner. I'm not entirely sure why. Boom, effect, center, stop affecting, slide that way. Looks good. And um, let's see. We go back to our picture. Yeah, you can see. I think see, that's yep, him right that's there. Him right there. The little guy there. Dink. So he's about halfway down the leg. Maybe, maybe, just a, maybe a little past better halfway. than yeah. halfway. Yeah. yeah, like that. And yeah, whatever you want to call him is fine for now. I really couldn't be bothered to care. Okay, so 
Now, we're looking good here. We just need to... Well, we could take a moment and go ahead and bevel out the knee. Because I think we're done with the primary part of the modeling. So let's switch over to edges. Come here, you. Edge. And loop. And we can bevel these two edges at the same time. Loop. And I keep calling it bevel. It's technically a chamfer, but... Yeah, but resulting in it results, a bevel. It results in a bevel, so don't give me any stuff about that. Okay, and that's cool. Let's grab you and you and you and you. We can do all these at the same time, so... Ah, loop. There you are. Chamfer, and this may be just a little bit more because it's a slightly bigger piece. Do we want a segment? Is that pushing it, you think? I don't know. I, let's go with it for now, and I'll just... I'll deal with the problems of that later. Uh, let's see. Loop you and you. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, and that grabs everybody but you. Now, the real $26 million question is, would we really need to chem for what's going on in there? I'm going to say no for now. Because you, you, do you really need a highlight right in there on your model for game? I'm going to say not yet. So, let's chem for this. We'll go with a single segment this time. And we'll pull this in. That's close to what it was on the outside, but I, since nobody can have their head on both sides of the knee at the same time, if they're a little different, that's okay. All right. Now, back over to edges. Get out of sub-object mode. He's looking pretty good. Actually, we could probably do the whole smoothing group dance. Make those all look better. Mm -hmm. um, 20 degrees too much? Is that going to work? I look good all of a sudden. F4. Ooh. I think that's going to work. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's see here. Now we got this guy. Let's just do him next. So, F4. Let me hit the two key to grab edges. Now, if I loop this guy, and we loop this guy, and then grab you, and you, and you, and you. Oh, didn't mean to deselect. I just want that guy. And then this guy. All right, cool. Now let's chamfer all that together. And pull down the amount. Something about like so. Click OK. All right, looking good. So let's pop back over here, this guy. Get a sub-object mode on this. Select over. There you go. Grab edges. Oh, the bounding box freaked me out there for a second. <laughs> you were wondering why there were double edges? Yeah, I was like, did I break something again? <laughs> Not that it would be the first time, but hey... All right, uh, loop all that, and that should be everything we need except for the corners up here. And that's even debatable as to whether or not that's necessary, but we're going to do it anyway. And chamfer. And pull that down a bit. And click OK. And let's hit F4, get out of sub-object mode. And now you can kind of start to see what's going on here, mm -hmm. which is good. So that takes us down to the shin. We got a little bit of a funny smoothing group issue taking place across the knee here because apparently when I put that extra segment in, these meet at a value that's less than 20 degrees, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit over smooth. Um, I'm going to fix that real quick. Let's jump over to edges and hit F2. I'm not F2. Excuse me. Um, I hit number two and then F4 as I get all confused. Let's ring those, and we'll ring these. And that looks pretty good. Hold down control, switch over to polygons. Ah, that's the F2 thing. And you guys are on a whole bunch of different smoothing groups, aren't you? Uh, well, let's put you on a different one real quick. There we go. And it just looks a little flatter right there. All right. Now, um, that done, we're going to move down and knock out the shin real quick. Now, the shin is its own little interesting cat. Let me find a picture that looks good. Uh, that's not bad. There's just sort of this funny capsule-shaped indention, and aside from that, it's really just a great big rectangle. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing interesting about it whatsoever. There you go. Now, of course, you can do that as a, um, a Boolean operation, mm -hmm. and that wouldn't be too hard to do. For the fun of it, I'm going to try not to use a Boolean. It's almost like a personal challenge. Let's just see if we can do this without doing a, a Boolean. Uh, what I want to do is come over to my create panel and let's build the whole thing from a cylinder. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's see. If I was defining the bottom of this little semicircular area, like this area right in here. And let's see, do we need to find a better picture, you think? I know. I even know the picture I want. Just 
down here at the very bottom, right here. Because that's a nice big yeah, still is. from the movie. There we go. So I just wanted to find this little area here. We could still use a Boolean to um, pull that in if we wanted to, mm -hmm. or just worry about that and stick that into the normal map as a mm -hmm. texture later. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it almost doesn't matter. Um, but let's start off. Let's draw out a cylinder kind of lined up right about here. That's nice and round. And we'll give it some height. I don't really know how much just yet we've created. Now, in the front view, which we've got one around here someplace. All right, this is a back view, but that's close enough. Let's move this guy over. And what I want to do is put the bottom of this piece at uh, the depth of that indention. All right, so once we have that, we need to reduce our height accordingly. So, shoom. Let's assume that our little temporary piece is about correct. Give or take, maybe a little bit. Okay. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, uh, now jump back over here to perspective for just a moment. Uh, how are we looking on overall size and positioning? I'll do a little bit of back and forth. Actually, I think it looks pretty good. Um, let's shade things up just a little. Wow, that lined up really well. Yeah, I think that's going to work. Okay. Okay, so now with him selected, convert over to an editable poly. And let's fade everything back out so we can kind of see what's going on. Hit four, grab this polygon and this polygon, and let's go ahead and just nuke those for now. Uh, well, there we go. Uh, over in the whatever view this happens to be, we're going to grab all of the upper polygons and nuke those too. Okay. Are you with us so far? Yes, I am. You see what we're doing? I pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no there surprising. As long as you don't ruin it for the rest of us, okay? I'm staying quiet. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Hold out shift and drag that up. Okay, so we got the inside of that indention. Fantastic. And let's uh, switch back over to edges, and we'll loop these. And uh, that's all looking nice so far. Let's see if we can get away with uh, just... It probably won't let me do... Th oh, ooh, 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 ooh. It probably won't let me do this, but... No, that's that's too much to hope for. Uh, let's extrude out those edges, and ooh, that's actually kind of working. That's frightening when it just works like that. All right, so extrusion height is fine. I don't want anything on the base width, if you don't mind, and that keeps everything nice and flat. So let's click OK. It looks like my normals are inverted, mm -hmm. which I'm generally fine with because that's easy to fix. Let's grab the whole element, and I'll just flip everything for now. Bink. All right, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so now over here into Vertex and all that fun jump, jive, and whale stuff, let's grab all of these vertices, and we're going to make them planar. Uh, let's see, is it Y? Yeah, it is. Wow, I got that on the first try. That never happens. Please don't jinx it for me. Let's scale these guys out from each other. All right, and that's about the width we're going for. So now we'll grab all of these, and I do not think that we are allowed to snap everybody and be really and it be really nice. Um, so let's see. Let's just do this. Let's make planar in X. Grab you guys. Make planar in X. Now we get the move tool out. What are we snapping to? We need to know. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're snapping to vertices, which is good. So let's start to do the snappy thing. I'll hit the S key and pop. Looking nice. All right, and grab you. And are you going to go? There you go. Nice. Okay, so now the funny thing is the uh, little indention shape is actually mm -hmm. centered up to the overall shape, but the shape itself is not centered up to our original geometry. Right. Whew, that's a mouthful. So let's slide this back over, and we'll get it kind of centered up on either side. Hit 1 to go over to vertices. Turn off snapping before I mm -hmm. hit something. I love that snapping is a mode that you toggle. I really love that. Have I, have I mentioned today how awesome I think that is? That you, you don't just hold down a hotkey and it just snaps? Like other applications I could complain about. All right. And then we can pull these guys actually down into the leg. And how are we looking? Um, I think we should be coming along pretty well in this whole fabrication process. All right, now uh, let's go back over to edges. I want this guy. Actually, what I'm going to do is turn on the bridge tool, and I'm going to click on this guy. 
And you're not going to let me actually see what I want, are you? Okay. Bink. You're, no, you're not. You're like, uh-uh, no way, dude. Okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. We can do it. We can't do it one way, we'll do it another. Uh, control, click. Thank you. All right, that's what we need there. Let's hit the three key. Grab this guy. Hit the cap key. And now that's all filled in. And happy. Now, back over here. We don't really need polygons on the top and bottom of this thing. Uh, be, it, it can stay hollow. So let's loop this, and that grabs all of that junk. Oh, excuse me. Control and Alt. I keep thinking I'm using another famous 3D application. All right, that looks good. Now jump over to the front view or something kind of like it anyway. Hold down Shift and give ourselves some sort of thickness for the leg. That looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. Bump. And do bridge. Okay. Looking good. If I do say so myself. I guess we're, I think we're actually ready to start beveling this thing out. Um, first things first. Let's get out of subobject mode. I want this guy here. Oh yeah, you can't really tell who we have selected. This guy. Delete. U. M. Apply. Okay, so we got our modeling material on that. Okay, looking good so far. Now switch over to edges. Let's grab this guy. What happens when I loop? Hey, that never happens. And um, chamfer, that's a little much. See, the chamfer is nice and clean since we didn't actually use a, a Boolean. Click OK. Two click, and uh, you probably, we could try looping. Actually, you can't. Okay, you can't do by angle. That would be really fancy if you could do that. Loop and let me hit F three to see what we just selected because I don't need everything that it just selected. Okay, that's good. All right, we're gonna have to loop that again and deselect the bottom polygons, which I'm generally all right with. And F three. Need to chamfer yet again. Do 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 do. I'll give this a little bit of a. Oh. We're not 67 segments. Oh, please. <laughs> Sorry. Please, it's... please don't crash, Max. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Nowadays, Max, it's a lot more stable than it used to I be. I can remember a time when that wasn't the case. When oh, what I can I remember just... a time with the four segments could have made things a little <laughs> shaky. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is all looking uh, most excellent. Uh, the only other thing I'd want to do now is there are some ridges. There are across... some slots. Yeah, some right ridgy thingies the... across the front of the leg. Yeah. And... Um, you can see those in a couple of the, the pictures. That's a pretty good one. You see them starting to show up here. Mm -hmm. You can see three of them back there. One, mm -hmm. two, three. So we need to create those. They also give the illusion of some tapering to the leg, which is why if you're looking at the images, you kind of notice there's a little bit of extra thickness there. So um, let's see here. If I, if I just wanted to cheat and get these done kind of quick. What? What if I hit a box and did the auto grid thing and just, just tape measured one out kind of sort of like that? Give it some sort of thickness. It's a little bit too much, but you know, we can work with it. You get something about there. Convert this to an editable poly. Switch over to edges. Get you and slide you down to create some sort of tapering. Do you think maybe that's too thick? I can take the greater part of the leg and pull it in a little bit. Do you see what I'm saying? Hmm. I don't know, it's hard to say. Because uh, it looks like that actually recedes in on the little box guy a little further. Do you see what, do you have any idea what I'm pointing out? Have I lost you? Um, the little piece that we made the indention in? Yeah. I wonder if I've made the whole thing too thick so those ridges could actually come out a little further. Hmm. Or too wide, I guess, from this side. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> it didn't look too wide, you know, based off some of the images that I was looking at. It probably doesn't matter. Um, let's just leave this guy like this for now we'll slide him to right about the middle of course we could of course use the align tool and yeah i don't think that did anything man i think i switched off all the axes which was pretty fancy on my part okay can we just go center to center then great that's exactly what i wanted all right and that looks pretty good and you know what? Let's do this. Let's shift drag this guy over. You do an instance. Make an instance. There you go. And then we're gonna do the whole pick thing. Pick you. 
mirror over. Do another instance, and let's see. Ting. Oh, Gross. you know what? We're not using reference coordinate center. That's what was killing us. Do an instance. Pick the right axis. Yeah. Click OK. So now they're all evenly spaced from one another. And we're not quite done yet. Um, if we grab all three of these guys, we can switch back over to cylinder 91 and mirror again. Still set to instance. Um, oh, I love modal windows, man. I live for them. All right. Bink. And um, choose your axis. And it says, nah, -uh. what's going on here? Cancel. Use reference coordinate center. Okay, thank you. And that looks pretty good. Click OK. So now we have a set of these on either side, and they're all instant, so we can just fix one, and they all kind of get fixed along for the show. So we'll grab you, get edges. I want this edge, and this edge, and this edge, and this edge, and that's probably all we need. Let's get these chamfered people. Whoa! Is that something about like so? Click OK. Grab them all, apply your material. Yep, and hit the M key and apply some modeling stuff. And I think we're about wrapped on the leg, dude, at least on this part of it. Um, the only other thing I could Minus think that to do. screw. Yeah, if you just really wanted that screw, do you, do you want to just Boolean it and call it even, or do you want to just put it in, in a texture? Because, I mean, it's just a little tiny hole. What do you say? Uh, I'm, I'm leaving it up to you, man. Mm. Quick call. It's a plane either way, so if we botch it, we can always delete it out and put it back in just as a flat plane and not worry about it. All right, give it a shot. All right. Do, do, do. Oh, we got a few minutes, really. So um, make a little cylinder and little guy. Little cute guy. Look at him go. And um, I would like to have my move tool back if that's not asking too much. Thank you. All right, so he's stuck in there. Uh, as for positioning, well, let's do this whole thing. You, and not center to center. Or actually, it doesn't really matter. I just want them in that one axis. I don't care. Communication center. Click OK. Looking nice. Select you. Jump back over to compound objects. Pro Boolean. Uh, start picking. Click you. Done. And let's see here. Um, remove. Extract. There was a, a thing there. I think now was there, huh? No, we're good. We're set to go. So let's right click. Uh, let's double check my little tiny vertices and just see how they're all doing. Yeah, I, I don't care about the op brands. Let's go ahead and convert that back over to an editable poly. We get some funny little things here, but I don't. We, we're not really going to avoid that nice and quickly and easily. Let's see. If I just select you, what do I have? That's just one vertex. So, let's see, if I, can I remove you without an explosion? And it says absolutely not. So, really, there you go. You've got your hole. Mm -hmm. And you just leave it at that. So let's hit F4. I mean, I could tr I don't think a bevel on that's going to work. Because we'd have to go in there and clean it up, which I, I would generally try to avoid. But let me just see here. Let's hit F4. And can I grab an edge to the... Oh, we have the wrong object selected, don't we? There we go. Let's grab you. Uh, loop. Yeah, it's not going to work at all. That's it, doesn't, cool. it doesn't even know that that's a loop, but that's okay. It's such a small thing. It doesn't really need a bevel, so I'm not really stressed about it. I wonder. What's up? If before Boolean that, when you Boolean that, how far out did the effect travel? All the way out to the edge, it looks like that, that line that you've got. All the way out to there, yeah. What about, was that line already running to the bottom left corner? Switch back um, over to a... Pink. Yeah. That guy... Uh, yeah, it might have blown... Oh, wait, no, th those all had lines, and that's just one that wasn't deleted. So that's a, an, a side effect of the okay. Pro Boolean. It actually nuked those out, because remember, I extruded all those. Right. So, because uh, one of the settings on Pro Boolean is to remove out uh, planar vertices like that, mm -hmm. and it just detected all but one of those and killed them. Yeah, it just makes me wonder if another way to have probably have done this, just a thought, Yeah. was what if the, um, what if the, the flat base, mm -hmm. the inset part, was just separated, right? 
Yeah, and then you just do the whole thing I did again. So yeah, we're, but it's just that one plate that's being screwed with. You see what I'm saying? I, th- I see what you're saying. Um, so here, let me let me demonstrate for the folks back home who might be going, Jason. I don't get it, man. Uh, let's jump over to Polygon. Yeah, that guy and is... just delete these guys out altogether. I think I see what you're saying. I I wouldn't have even gone that far. I would have left the bottom one. Yeah, and taken the top one and just separated him out. Oh no no no! See so what I was thinking. Uh, okay, I, I I get where you're coming from because you could just bully in that. But if he's going to be a separate object anyway, why mm-hmm. not just grab the faces here and just extrude them out and not do a boolean at all? No, no, I totally agree with that. I thought you were just trying to cut corners. So I was oh trying no no to no! Give you a slightly cleaner way. Yeah yeah. Of I, cutting corners, but right right. But if we're if we're going to make it a separate object anyway, I would rather do it like this. All right, we'll give the guys a little extra show tonight. We'll run late. Okay, well it's too late. I think we have to at this point anyhow. So. We're, we're already running late. It's all good. Yeah. Good so, fun, and we weren't here last night, so... So there you go. Hopefully, the four people that are watching this are enjoying it. All four of you. Have a drink on me. <laughs> or Okay, not really. I'm not buying Yeah, because, no, Zach, Zach's too cheap. I'm too... Well, it depends. If you get me, in, like, in the bar and... Dr- okay, we won't go there. Let's, let's not discuss that on the show. True. Uh, He'll give his wallet away to a stranger at that point, but you've got to give him at least dude, one glass of wine. Yeah, you need this more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, so let's see. Boom click loop and then uh, extrude click uh, no base width thank you very much and that's actually not bad for starters click OK hit 5 to grab the element of course flip everything around so we can actually see what's going on let's grab all of these vertices and we'll do a couple of things first off we will planarize them is that in Y? yeah and we'll pull them down to about here these vertices, you know, you could just grab them and just tug them down and call it if you just really wanted to. Now, because I'm trying to be all nice and neat and all those other nice things as well, let's grab you and we could planarize you and then is that oh, oh no, you did you missed a vertex. I missed a vertex. We need this guy and then we could planarize that guy so he's all nice and straight and tink planarize this guy so he's all nice and straight. And then I would grab, instead of pulling these out, which you could, you, you could just stretch those all the way out. What I do instead, though, is, uh, let's see, let's, I don't really want to loop, but we'll use it as a start. Grab all of this and then just shift drag it up. Okay, so now let's get out of here. Let's press F4. We need to put our modeling material on that guy. So um, M and select apply close shade up so now you have essentially the exact same effect even though they're two separate objects the upshot is that your geometry is nice and clean now so if you want to grab uh one of these little tiny edges in here come on you can do it uh two there you go wrong one let's get a little closer you loop ah it loops magically and stuff and now we can chamfer that whoa (laughs) just a little bit of chamfer to show it off and click OK, and there you go. Ooh, it's almost a little too much chamfer. Yeah, but I would think so. That's okay. We'll undo it, and we'll do a little less chamfer. But we did all this so that we'd have clean geometry. So I'd feel bad at this point if we didn't chamfer it. So we'll do just a little tiny, tiny, tiny amount of chamfer, so we catch right. a little tiny rim light right in there. And boom. There you go, F4, and we're set. So I think we're all done here for today. Okay. We've got the entire lower leg pretty much wrapped up. Okay. So that is going to wrap things up for tonight's modeling episode. I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us, and we will catch you on the next one. Until then, take it easy. Cool.